Good morning. Here's the sign up, if you don't already get California Today by email. Over the last couple of weeks, you may have noticed some new names in this newsletter. That's because we have some new Times journalists working in California for our Styles desk. They'll be helping to keep us updated on trends, life, art, and much more. Here's our first entry from one of them, Daniel Hernandez. The letter size pencil drawing on view at the Craft Contemporary Museum in Los Angeles shows two prison inmates in a locker room, wrapped in a furtive embrace. Familiar acts are beautiful through love, the script caption reads. Explicit without being pornographic, the drawing is one of many in the exhibition, on the inside, that breaches one of the strongest taboos in a society that incarcerates more people than any other, the celebration of consensual sex in the prison system. The artist is identified only as Stevie S., a person who is currently incarcerated in the United States and identifies as LGBTQ. The piece is titled Acceptance. On the inside, opened during Pride Month in Los Angeles in June, and might have fallen under the radar this summer for visitors and California art lovers. But the show packs an undeniable punch, pushing boundaries in both subject matter and Kuratayan. Prison art is usually associated with political prisoners, as well as the injustices and dangers of being incarcerated. Sexuality for its own sake is rarely a focus. You're technically not allowed to have sex, but people in prison are. The institution deals with the rules but not the reality, said Tatiana von Forstenberg, the LA-based filmmaker and producer who teamed up with Black and Pink, an online LGBTQ inmate advocacy organization, to create the exhibition. It had its premiere in New York in 2016 and runs until September 8 in Los Angeles. All the art is pretty much on letter size paper. Those are the only materials available, pencils, big pens. That to me says it all, she said. That speaks to the resilience and the power of the human spirit in every way. Viewers can send Stevie S. and all the other artists in the show personal text messages, deliverable with a numerical code, to a telephone number listed on the opening wall. Every two weeks, the organizers of On the Inside print the messages and mail them to the incarcerated artists. It's a nod to the pen pal tradition of prison culture in the United States, which is increasingly being seen as a harm-reducing salve for those behind bars. The ability to send messages to inmates adds an unusual and invigorating layer of intimacy between the artist and the viewer at the Craft Contemporary exhibit. People are really good, Ms. von Forstenberg said. It's very personal. We often link to sites that limit access for non-subscribers. We appreciate your Reading Times coverage, but we also encourage you to support local news if you can. The push to teach ethnic studies in California's schools faces a fundamental dilemma, whose stories should be told. And how? The New York Times. A temperature increase of 2 degrees Celsius has become a kind of marker of extreme climate change. See how much your California county has warmed since 1895. The Washington Post. Heat records were met or shattered in almost a dozen cities in the Bay Area and Monterey County this week. The Mercury News. About a year after Democratic groups called Representative Devin Nunes a fake farmer, the congressman reported owning a stake in a farm. He did not list any income from it. The Fresno Bee. State laws limit what cities can do about guns. But they are trying. The New York Times. Rose Pack was a tireless advocate for San Francisco's long-planned Central Subway. But Ms. Pack's critics, who say she was a bully, are protesting efforts to name the Chinatown station after her. The San Francisco Chronicle. The Fresno Grizzlies cancelled the World Taco Eating Championship after a man died following another taco eating contest at the ballpark on Tuesday night. The Fresno Bee. How much house can you get for $1.3 million in Long Beach? A bungalow in Belmont Shore with four bedrooms, two bathrooms, and an upgraded kitchen. In Pennsylvania, you can get a secluded house designed by the Apple Store architect, Peter Bolin. The New York Times. 
retirement aid shoppers elbow one another to get to the Persian cucumbers. The foot traffic in one week, 200,000 people walk through the store is enough for 10 nights at Staples Center. Welcome to Super King. The Los Angeles Times. If you missed it, here's what that Taco Bell Hotel in Palm Springs was like. Good or bad? Depends on how you feel about influencers and fire sauce. Los Angeles Magazine. From Hawthorne's Cockatoo Inn to the Musso and Frank Grill in Hollywood, here's a guide to Quentin Tarantino's Southland. The New York Times. You know about how Johnny Cash performed at Folsom Prison in 1968. Los Tigres del Norte recently performed there in tribute, and now the band has announced an album and documentary about its performance, and about the prison's shifting population. Capital Public Radio. Tajal Rao, the Times's California restaurant critic, recently made a new friend. He is adorable, and you should watch all his videos, which are soothing. I'll let her explain. The first time I met the up and coming INST Agram star, known as the Tiny Chef, he was sitting in the palm of his creator Rachel Larson, an animator you might know from her work on Coraline and Isle of Dogs. The chef, known for his lispy, sing-song, utterly joyful cooking videos, stood about six inches tall. He was a pale fuzzy green with a big round belly and long arms, and though I was visiting the Glendale studio as a reporter, I wanted to squeal, pick him up and run away. I didn't. I reported a story with Ms. Larson and her team, Oslam Akshirk and Adam Reed, and tried to understand the tiny chef's meteoric rise to fame, as well as our collective obsession with seeing ordinary foods replicated in miniature. California Today goes live at 6.30 a.m. Pacific Time weekdays. Tell us what you want to see, ca today at newyorktimes.com. Where you forwarded this email? Sign up for California Today here. Jill Cowan grew up in Orange County, went to school at UC Berkeley and has reported all over the state including the Bay Area, Bakersfield, and Los Angeles but she always wants to see more. Follow along here or on Twitter, at Jill Cowan. California Today is edited by Julie Bloom, who grew up in Los Angeles and graduated from UC Berkeley.